everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach. This time I wanted to focus on some Unit 3 content because of the exam that's coming up. Now I've had quite a few of you contact me saying that you're having some trouble with the physics experiments that have come up previously. So in this video I'm covering one of the physics experiments and I'll be uploading another one later on as well. Now the first one I wanted to cover was the experiment that is titled Investigating How Changing the Length of a Wire Affects Its Resistance. So in terms of this particular topic, what you need to know is first of all what resistance is, and you also need to understand which factors affect resistance. We're really just looking at the opposition in an electrical component to the movement of the electrical charge through it. And resistance is normally measured in ohms by using an ohmeter as an example, but we can also calculate it if we know the potential difference and we know the current that's going through the circuit. Now, the factors that affect resistance, well, you've got, first of all, the material of the wire. For example, copper, as a material of wire, has a lower resistance than steel. Another example is length. The longer the wire is, the greater the resistance there is. And then the thickness of the wire also makes a difference. If you've got a smaller diameter, then you're going to have a greater resistance. And then lastly, the factor that affects most experiments in science is temperature. By heating up the wire, you will increase the resistance as well. So when you're investigating how changing the length of the wire affects its resistance, you have to think about controlling the material of the wire, the thickness of it, and the temperature. So let's have a look at the actual circuit setup. In the Unit 3 exam, you're also expected to draw how you might set up a circuit. So something like this would be suitable for this experiment. What I've got over here is I've got the 1.5 volt cell. You don't have to label it up with a voltage, but you just say that there's a battery or a cell there. You have to show where you'd put your ammeter and you'd also have to show where you'd put your voltmeter. Now the ammeter and the voltmeter are connected in a series circuit. And that voltmeter will be connected in parallel to the resistance wire that's highlighted in the red over there. You will see underneath the resistance wire, I've also got a meter ruler set up. This will allow me to measure the length of the wire more accurately. Now, when we set up the circuit, you also need to have a couple of crocodile clips that connects up the circuit to the wire. And the idea is that, let's say, for example, this is a 10 centimeter section that we're measuring. And when I say we're measuring 10 centimeter section. If I show you on my pointer, I'm going between here and here. Let's just say for argument's sake, that's 10 centimeters. If the next section I want to measure is 15, I would simply undo this crocodile clip over here and move it along till it says 15. And then that would be that entire length of wire that's being measured. Remember, at the end of the day, all of this is not a solid component. We draw them as straight lines, but these are all just wires. So it's really important to be able to picture that. So when we look at the actual methodology, all I've done is just write down a step by step method. So the first thing I would say is you need to connect the circuit as shown in the diagram. Now, the key thing is in the exam, you will have to draw your circuit. And so the first point you can say is the diagram shows the setup of the circuit. Step one, set it up as shown in the diagram. Then I said in step two, measure the voltmeter reading or the potential difference and the ammeter reading or the current and note them on a table for the first length. So my first length was, for example, 10 centimeters. And I've just created a table and I've shown you the length of the wire. I've noted down the potential difference using my voltmeter. I've also noted down my current, which I've taken from the ammeter. And then by doing a calculation between these two figures, I can work out what the resistance is. So as soon as I'm done with that first length, I would simply go on to the second length. So for 20 centimetres, I've noted down the potential difference, I've noted down the current for 30, 40, 50, and so on, whatever your lengths are. And the key thing is, is just make sure that you do write down in your methodology that you're moving the crocodile clip to the next length. So just one of the crocodile clips moves to, towards the next length, and that should help you um, get a good set of results like the sample set that I've got on the table in front of you now. Now, in order to work out that resistance, just a quick reminder that resistance is equal to the potential difference divided by the current. So in order for me to get this 0.33, I've simply divided 0.96 by 2.90, so on and so forth until I've got all of these figures over here. And then I can plot the length of the wire on the x-axis and the resistance on the y-axis. And that will give me a good conclusive relationship to say that as the length of the wire increases, the resistance goes up. 
and it goes up in what we call a proportional relationship. You can see that for each one, it goes up in around 0.33 sections for each of the extra 10 centimeters of the wire. So that's quite important to note down as well. Now, the other thing you'd have to consider in your methodology is the hazards and the control variables as well. So one of the main hazards for this is that the resistance wire, as we're passing the current through it, it might become heated and that can introduce burns to the skin if you were to touch it. So to control that particular hazard, we would just make sure that the wire is not touched when the circuit is connected. In terms of the actual control variables, you need to make sure that you consider the factors that affect resistance. So we said earlier that the, the wire type will affect resistance. So you need to make sure you use the same wire that is of the same material and the wire that you're using is of the same thickness, particularly if you're doing repeated results on another day. You would have to control the temperature as much as possible. So for example, as the current passes through the wire, the wire might heat up. And so you want to make sure that the wire is cool enough or the same temperature as when you first started the experiment. Otherwise, it could affect your results. So hopefully that's been helpful for you guys for unit three. Remember with your exam coming up, you do need to know about how to write methodologies, even your predictions, so your hypotheses and how you might draw a graph or certainly what you might plot on a graph as well. If you've got any further questions about this, then feel free to leave me a comment underneath this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.